Well, good morning, everybody. Welcome to this morning's reading for Advent. Today is Wednesday, December 5th. I'm really glad that you guys are journeying with us through these days. I should point out that tomorrow is St. Nicholas's Day, which is a really awesome day to observe. Um, we'll actually have a blog post for you to check out after today's reading. That'll go into more detail for you about that. Today, as we read these scriptures and we pray these prayers together, I am particularly moved by the last phrase of our prayers, and that is, let us commend the world which Christ will judge to the mercy and protection of God this day. I think what I love is that we can just be encouraged to pray for our communities and for our state, for our nation, for our world, by entrusting it to the mercy and protection of God, and that we remove ourselves from the judgment seat and can actually be moved in our hearts for peoples and for countries and for them, for us to pray for them to, to actually awaken to the hope of Christ. So I just want to challenge us, encourage us to be mindful of our hearts toward our planet today, that we could surrender it along with our judgments to the mercy of God. And with that, let's begin. O Lord, open our lips and our mouths shall proclaim your praise. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. Blessed are you, sovereign God of all. To you be praise and glory forever. In your tender compassion, the dawn from on high is breaking upon us to dispel the lingering shadows of night. As we look for your coming among us this day, open our eyes to behold your presence and strengthen our hands to do your will that the world may rejoice and give you praise. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God forever. Psalm 119 Blessed are those whose ways are blameless, who walk according to the law of the Lord. Blessed are those who keep his statutes and seek him with all their heart. They do no wrong but follow his ways. You have laid down precepts that are to be fully obeyed, Oh, that my ways were steadfast in obeying your decrees. Then I would not be put to shame when I consider all your commands. I will praise you with an upright heart as I learn your righteous laws. I will obey your decrees. Do not utterly forsake me. How can those who are young keep their way pure? By living according to your word. I seek you with all my heart. Do not let me stray from your commands. I have hidden your word in my heart that I might not sin against you. Praise be to you, Lord. Teach me your decrees. With my lips I recount all the laws that come from your mouth. I rejoice in following your statutes, as one rejoices in great riches. I meditate on your precepts and consider your ways. I delight in your decrees. I will not neglect your word. Be good to your servant while I live, that I may obey your word. Open my eyes that I may see wonderful things in your law. I am a stranger on earth. Do not hide your commands from me. My soul is consumed with longing for your laws at all times. You rebuke the arrogant who are accursed, those who stray from your commands. Remove me from their scorn and contempt, for I keep your statutes. The rulers sit together and slander me. Your servant will meditate on your decrees. Your statutes are my delight. They are my counselors. Free us from our sins, O God, and may our sacrifices be of praise to the glory of your Son, our Redeemer, Jesus Christ. And now from Isaiah 2. This is what Isaiah, son of Amos, saw concerning Judah and Jerusalem. In the last days, the mountain of the Lord's temple will be established as the highest of the mountains. It will be exalted above the hills, and all nations will stream to it. Many peoples will come and say, Come, let us go up to the mountain of the Lord, to the house of the God of Jacob. He will teach us his ways, so that we may walk in his paths. The law will go out from Zion, the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. He will judge between the nations and will settle disputes for many peoples. They will beat their swords into plowshares and their spears into pruning hooks. Nation will not take up sword against nation nor will they train for war any more. Come, house of Jacob, let us walk in the light of the Lord. The day of the Lord, you have abandoned your people, the house of Jacob. They are full of superstitions from the east. They practice divination like the Philistines and clasp hands with pagans. 
Their land is full of silver and gold. There is no end to their treasures. Their land is full of horses, and there is no end to their chariots. Their land is full of idols. They bow down to the work of their hands, to what their fingers have made. So people will be brought low and everyone humbled. Do not forgive them. Go into the rocks, hide in the ground from the fearful presence of the Lord and the splendor of his majesty. The eyes of the arrogant will be humbled and human pride brought low. The Lord alone will be exalted in that day. From 1 Thessalonians 2. And we also thank God continually because when you received the word of God, which you heard from us, you accepted it not as a human word, but as it actually is, the word of God, which is indeed at work in you who believe. For you, brothers and sisters, became imitators of God's churches in Judea, which are in Christ Jesus. You suffered from your fellow citizens the same things those churches suffered from the Jews, who killed the Lord Jesus and the prophets and also drove us out. They displease God and are hostile to everyone in their effort to keep us from speaking to the Gentiles so that they may be saved. In this way, they always heap up their sins to the limit. The wrath of God has come upon them at last. But brothers and sisters, when we were orphaned by being separated from you for a short time, in person, not in thought, out of our intense longing, we made every effort to see you, for we wanted to come to you. Certainly I, Paul, did again and again, but Satan blocked our way. For what is our hope, our joy, or the crown in which we will glory in the presence of the Lord Jesus when he comes? Is it not you? Indeed, you are our glory and joy. And now from Luke 20. The teachers of the law and the chief priests looked for a way, the, the chief priests looked for a way to arrest him immediately because they knew he had spoken this parable against them, but they were afraid of the people. Keeping a close watch on him, they sent spies who pretended to be sincere. They hoped to catch Jesus in something he said so that they might hand him over to the power and authority of the governor. So the spies questioned him, Teacher, we know that you speak and teach what is right, and that you do not show partiality but teach the way of God in accordance with the truth. Is it right for us to pay taxes to Caesar or not? He saw through their duplicity and said to them, Show me a denarius, whose image and inscription are on it. Caesar's, they replied. He said to them, then give back to Caesar what is Caesar's, and to God what is God's. They were unable to trap him in what he had said there in public, and astonished by his answer, they became silent. Now it is time to awake out of sleep, for the night is far spent, and the day is at hand. Like the sun in the morning sky, the Savior of the world will dawn. Like rain upon the meadows, the Christ will come down upon us. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel, who has come to his people and set them free. He has raised up for us a mighty Savior, born of the house of his servant David. Through his holy prophets, God promised of old to save us from our enemies, from the hands of all that hate us, to show mercy to our ancestors, and to remember his holy covenant. This was the oath God swore to our father Abraham, to set us free from the hands of our enemies, free to worship him without fear, holy and righteous in his sight all the days of our life. And you, child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his way, to give his people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of all their sins. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us to shine on those who dwell in the darkness and the shadow of death and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. Watchful at all times, let us pray for strength to stand with confidence before our Maker and Redeemer, that God may bring in His kingdom with justice and mercy. Let us pray to the Lord that we may seek him in the scriptures and recognize him in the breaking of the bread. Let us pray to the Lord. That God may bind up the brokenhearted, restore the sick, and raise up all who have fallen. Let us pray to the Lord. Let's now pray in silence.
Let us commend the world, which Christ will judge, to the mercy and protection of God this day. Almighty God, give us grace to cast away the works of darkness and to put on the armor of light, now in the time of this mortal life, in which your Son Jesus Christ came to give us in great humility, that on the last day, when he shall come again in his glorious majesty, to judge the living and the dead, we may rise to the life immortal through Jesus Christ our Lord. Now let's say the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Don't forget that tomorrow is St. Nicholas Day, so be sure to check out the blog and see why this day is significant and see how you can celebrate it with your kids.